What's up guys, it's Caleb here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you an exclusive what I carry on the trail. Stay tuned. Yes, I know, I'm in my garage again. We're back to the garage videos. I wanted to go to the lake and film. Unfortunately, as you can see from outside, maybe, I don't know how the exposure is, it's raining and it hasn't stopped raining for the past four days. I went out to the, the lake to film, didn't work out. So here I am in my garage filming this video for you. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully the audio is good. I got this fancy mic thing I'm holding now. So stay tuned, check out my dog. So a question I get asked a lot is, hey, what should I carry on the trail? A lot of people in our group are really new to off-roading. It's totally awesome. I love seeing new people getting out. I remember my first time, I was all confused. I thought I had to buy all this expensive stuff to go off-roading, and the truth is, you really don't. I've gotten by for six years straight in my Jeep and now my Bronco with some very basic stuff. Only recently that I've started to do a lot of recoveries on the side, that I'm responsible for bigger groups where I need to make up for any lack of equipment, I've actually started bringing some more stuff and started spending a little bit more money on what I bring. Now, something important to note, what you have is different depending on what you do and what vehicle you run and where you wheel and how hard you wheel. So what I have to show you, what I carry, is not maybe what's best for you. So keep that in mind. Also, I am not an expert in first aid. I'm not an expert in recovering. I do it on the side a bunch, but I don't, well, I mean, I do first aid at my job quite a bit, unfortunately, but I'm not necessarily uh, what you would say a field expert, nor am I trying to teach you anything here. I'm just showing you what I use and what I have used, what's worked for me, what hasn't worked for me, and some changes I'm making in the future. I, like I said, I have two different setups, or maybe even three. I have what I have in my vehicle at any given moment. If you see me, it's in my vehicle. I also have what I carry with me when I go out on a trip, like a day trip, a snow trip, a night trip. Not necessarily planning on spending the night, but being prepared to spend the night. And then I have what I bring when I go on long, hard, off-roading, rock crawling trips for multiple days. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna show you kind of the splits about what I got here, what I got there. Just show you what it's about. Stay tuned. So something that everyone needs to have when they're off-roading is flashlights. Light is very important for a variety of things, all right? Changing your tire on the side of the road, looking for your keys that you lost, doing some sort of repair, looking like around for any sort of weird noise that you might see at night if you get scared of that kind of stuff. And I keep a variety of things on me. Again, none of this is like sponsored or nothing because I'm not that cool, but Phoenix, they make, it's spelled F-E-N-I-X, they make great selections of headlamps. Headlamps are awesome, keeps you hands free, USB-C rechargeable, plugs right into my Bronco, it's a great source of light. I think this one's 600 lumens, they make them all the way up to 1500. Personally, I think 1500 is too bright because you get that backlight onto your eyes, makes you squint. 600 is where it's at. I also have one of Phoenix USB rechargeable Flashlights, super bright. Mine is currently at a, I need to recharge it. <laughs> but it's uh, super bright, trust me on that one. I think this one is about 800 lumens. It has a really nice beam that goes out and you can change the settings as well. This one, $10 on Amazon, it works. This one, it's called Police Security. It's just, uh, Another cheap Amazon flashlight. Works well, easy to store, AA batteries. Or, yeah, AA batteries. But what about charging your flashlights, right? You can charge them from the, the car, sure, you can plug them in, but what if you're trying to save gas? What if you've got uh, a breakdown and you can't turn your car on? How are you gonna charge your stuff to keep it going? Well, you're gonna need battery packs. I love Amazon. This was $50 on Amazon. It's made by, I don't know. It says HI-S024 on it. It's got USB ports there, a few different types, and you can recharge it with the sun. You can also recharge it by plugging it in. So before a trip, I'll, re I'll charge it fully, and then during the trip, as I need to tap it off, just put it in the sun. One day I'll upgrade to a battery pack, but uh, I'm still cheap. 
I also have this Simple Wrap Power Amazon battery pack as well. Same thing, it just can't recharge with the sun. Another thing that's pretty important to have is a tire repair kit. Now, this isn't anything special. Again, cheap, it works. Amazon, it's got a little tire gauge. It's got some rubber cement. It's got the tools you need to enlarge that hole to put your patches in. It also has some circular uh, rubber patches as well that you can put on the inside of your tire. This kit is awesome. I've used it a few times, no complaints. It does the job. Next, let's go to shovel. Rhino USA shovel, I think it was $20. I've used it a lot. It's my poop shovel. It's my dig a fire pit shovel. It's my dig myself out of the snow shovel. It's got serrations on the edge. It's got a pointy tip. And if you wanna do this, uh, I'm not gonna do it now, but it's got a pick as well. You can loosen it up and it turns into a pick. Great shovel. It folds down into a bag about yay big. Really nice. I've used it for like two years, no issues. But what about tape? I got tape too. Flex Seal, you've seen the ads. It actually works. I've used it a few times to patch some piping and etc. I've used it on a radiator hose. Didn't work super well for that, but it did get me home. It works, I use it. Duct tape, you gotta have duct tape. I always have duct tape on me. And rags. Have some rags on you. I keep about four or five of these cheap ones from AutoZone. They work well, they soak stuff up, they clean off grease, it's good. And I actually haven't used these yet, but I got fastening cable straps, just a bunch of different sizes. They're Velcro, they got clasps. Uh, just if I wanted to tie stuff up that's rattling around in the car. I use a few of these on my Molly pre-existing and I have just a bunch of extra just in case. Throw that there. Also, if you're in the dirt and you're in the mud and you gotta get down and dirty, you don't have to. Buy a tarp. They work well. Five dollars. Speak about getting down and dirty, you need tools. Ford is kind enough to provide a set of tools with your Bronco that can accomplish a variety of small tasks. They got some torques in there, they got some sockets, they got a wrench, they got a ratchet, they got some screwdrivers. It works pretty well. I also have a much bigger kit that I keep with me when I go on my other runs. I'll show you that soon. Food. I always have three MREs with me. They don't taste good, they're not yummy, but they, they last a long time. I keep a few MREs with me just in case I'm out and about. I decide to do a last minute recovery. I end up getting stuck or have to spend the night. At least I have food. I'm not going to go hungry. So, I enjoy being comfortable. If I'm out just exploring, I find a nice spot. I want to set up for an hour or two. I got my hammock with me. Always keep a hammock with you. I have that uh, Molly system in the back. If you watch my review video of my Bronco. It showcases that pretty well. It's from JCR. I love that upper shelf. Most of this stuff I'm showing you right now is just all stored up there, tucked away, out of sight, out of mind until I want it. Gloves. Keep a pair of gloves on you. I worked as a trail guide for Jeep Jamboree USA. They provided me with these worn gloves. They're awesome. They work. It's gloves. So, I own a Bronco. I'm going to be making a video about the tie rods on the Bronco because that is a hot topic and I have my own opinion about it just like everyone else. I also have, to put it simply, lots of experience with dozens of Broncos on the trails over the past year. And I will say, I have yet to see a tie rod break. Now, I know they can break if wheeled improperly and in that in that case, I do have an extra tie rod with me. I carry this at all times. Mine have been fine, others have been fine, but just in case, I got one with me. Hand sanitizer. COVID or not, I don't really care. I got hand sanitizer. Stay clean, wash your hands after you use the restroom, guys. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. There's no excuse. Radios, another no excuse thing that you need to have. If you off-road, if you go out on the trails, if you go by yourself especially, 
but even if you go in a group, have a radio. Foul thing, $20. You bought an expensive Jeep or Bronco or Yoda or whatever you got, you put thousands of dollars into upgrades, why don't you have a $20 radio? Guys, come on. I got FM radio, I can listen to music, I can go on ham channels and I can get on emergency channels. I can add different systems and antennas to get better range. I can talk on GMRS, FRS, you name it. This little bad boy can do it. $20, okay? $20, a few miles of range on a good day, especially on the top of a mountain. Get one, there's no excuses, be safe. First aid kits. If you're gonna carry one, which I suggest, know how to use the stuff in it. If you do not know how to use the stuff in your first aid kit or you haven't opened it up and looked at it, then when the time comes and you need it, you're gonna really regret that moment, trust me. When you're choosing a first aid kit, understand what you're gonna be doing and what problems you could encounter and plan for those. For example, off-roading, what are some injuries you could have? Broken limbs, crushed limbs, lacerations, you probably carry an ax, you probably chop firewood, what if you miss and cut a toe off? That makes me shudder just thinking about that, but that can happen. Paper cuts, paper cuts are annoying. How do you clean it up and make it better? Fix the boo-boos. Come on guys, break a bone, break a finger. Maybe you're out target shooting, maybe you like that kind of stuff. Maybe someone has an accident and you need a chest seal. Do you know how to put that on? You better learn. When you choose your kit, choose something that's got all the stuff to help you with those situations and make sure it has band-aids. You'll be surprised how many of these kits you buy, they don't have band-aids. This is Amazon Special. I bought it a few years ago. It's worked well. I've used some of the stuff. It's great. But as I've gone out more and more, I found the limitations and I bought a better one and I'll show you that in a minute. It's got your stuff for bandaging and splinting. I'm not going to show you how to use any of this stuff because I don't assume any liability. You've got your gauze, you got CPR mask, Q-tips for your dirty ears, scissors. You need a good pair of shears. You will need those, trust me. Hopefully not on you. A knife, happen to come with a knife. I already got lots of knives. And then this one is one of those emergency bandages, basically a trauma wound dressing, soaks up a lot of blood. More bandages. Gloves, compressed gauze, some tape. Emergency blankets. I've never used one, but I can see how it's very useful. Triangle bandage, tourniquet. Have a tourniquet. If you don't have anything else, have a tourniquet. That'll save your life. And an absorbent pad. So I know this kit's pretty basic. It doesn't have a lot of necessities that some of you guys might be like, well, you need that. You're probably right, you probably do need it. And I, that's why I got the bigger kit. So I'll show you that in a second. Here's the upgrade, guys. Rhino Rescue, also bought on Amazon. My Medic makes awesome kits. They're just very expensive. I can get decent stuff that's still quality at a good price which is all I need this kit is very good it has a detachable pack that you can just strip away and carry with you that's got all this good stuff gloves I know you can't see it very well but it's got eye shields like this thing has it all I'm not gonna go into how much stuff it has but it's got a lot of accessories it's got all the stuff previously mentioned it has a marker it has a little tube to stick down your throat, has better shears that are much sharper. It's got better quality and more compressed gauze. That's also important to have. It has the emergency bandages. It has the tourniquets. It has band-aids. It has rope. It has blankets. It's chest seals. You want that, trust me. If you're that kind of guy that does that kind of stuff, you want a chest seal on you. This one has two. Again, go somewhere else to learn how to use that stuff. I don't accept liability, but there's a lot of resources out there. Learn how to use what you carry and carry a lot. If you think you just need a basic kit with some band-aids, 
add a couple extra to that just in case, guys. Drop my mic. Oops. Still good. Okay. I mean, that was a lot. We're not done yet. If you look in here, I'm not going to take it out, but I've got two, two more radios that I keep in there. I have two chairs, just fold-up chairs that I keep on my molly. I have a small hatchet I keep up there. But what do you do if you get stuck? Well, if you're out by yourself and you get stuck, you're kind of out of luck unless you have a winch. I recommend having a winch. I have a winch. I have a winch controller. I have all that stuff. But if you're with a group, you should have other options as well to help pull each other out. One size does not fit all. There are lots of different things you can use to get yourself out of different situations depending on vehicle, terrain, how you're stuck, what's going on, where you're recovering from. Starting with the basics, get a strap. Harbor Freight, very cheap. They have really good 30 foot and 20 foot straps. They're really strong. They're a little bungee type like but not like the connect straps. And well, I mean, I've towed some vehicles out with these. They're super strong. They last a long time. Have a few of those. They're good to use as tree savers. They're good to use around, like wrapping around stuff to extend your winch line. You can use them for a lot of stuff. Have axle straps. They're also good to use as tree savers. Wrap around your tree, attach your winch to the strap, you save a tree, save paper, save humanity, your hero. Soft shackles. Highly recommend. Get yourself more than one. Get at least two, preferably three. You'll use these a lot. Another soft shackle. Smaller axle strap. Very strong. Wrap around an axle. Pull it out. Just make sure it's a good recovery point that you're using. In here I got more of the straps, I'm not going to pull those out since I already saw those. And then I have a Spartan Rope Kinetic Line. This is very, very good for doing those bungee poles. This is one of my favorite upgrades so far. You can find cheap ones on Amazon for $80 to $120 that'll work just fine for the average pole. But if you're going to do heavy duty stuff constantly, get yourself a Spartan Rope or something equivalent. They're really good, good quality product. And some of their stuff is American made. Not all, but some. Snatch block, very useful. If you're doing winching, if you have a winch, get a snatch block. You can basically change angles. You can double your pulling power. You can do a lot of stuff with a snatch block, especially two snatch blocks. I've done some weird recoveries on the Rubicon where my Jeep was sideways into a rock face and I couldn't go forward or backwards. I had to go up and I was able to use my winch and another guy's winch with some snatch blocks and basically inch it back up off the rock face and onto the trail. It was pretty cool. I did not get video, but it did happen. Uh, D-rings. These are great. I keep two on the front of my vehicle. I have a couple spares in my bag. Soft shackles are going to be stronger and better in most applications, but there is a time and a place for these. I also have this weird, uh, actually this one went with this. I have this weird soft shackle slash snatch block as well. It's basically a snatch block on a soft shackle. It's pretty versatile, it's lightweight, it doesn't clang around like this does. So you know, what I carry, I have four of these soft shackles. I have two snatch blocks. I have two of these straps. I've got two of these longer axle straps, tree saver things. And I have four of these small axle straps. I have one kinetic rope. I have a second on standby. I just don't bring both with me because it's just a lot of space. I don't need it. And I've got uh, the bag to carry my tools. I've got my shovel like I showed you. And that's pretty much it as far as my recovery gear that I carry with me at any moment in time. Max tracks or this Amazon no name brand that I have. Debated topic whether or not they're actually useful. I've seen them work. I've seen them not work. A lot of times I, I think people are really quick 
to buy these before they buy anything else that's much more important, like straps or kinetics or soft shackles. They're useful, there's a time and a place for them, but they take up a lot of space, they can be very expensive, and they don't work as often as I'd like. That being said, when they do work, they're awesome. I used them once on a night run just last Friday, and it worked. It got me out of a situation that would have taken forever to use a winch on. Very excited about them. I don't carry them with me every day though. This is for when I'm going on a trip overnight or just on a, a deep snow run out into the mountains and I might need these, I'll bring them with me. You can use them as ramps too. You can use them as a, a base for a, a jack, which by the way, all I have for a jack is my stock jack from Ford that's in the back of my vehicle. It's worked fine. I've used it to change a tire on the trail. I didn't have an issue with it. I don't have a high lift. It's big, it's heavy. I don't have room. So that is something I want to get soon is a better jack. I actually bought a power jack, a power built, and I realized my Bronco flex is too much for it to work and the frame is too high for it to be effective. So it doesn't work for my application. I've seen it work on a Jeep. For me, it, it didn't work. So stock jack did surprisingly. So I carry a stock jack. It's, it's proven and it works. I almost forgot, I also carry jumper cables everywhere I go, have them in my car at all times. They're pretty useful. I've had the battery start things not work before or they ran out of battery and I forgot to charge it. Jumper cables, they always work. They're always good to go. And then going back into the stuff I carry when I am going a little bit into more of an adventure state, like when I'm planning a trip, whether it's for one day, whether it's for two days, this is stuff I carry with me as well. So whenever I go out on a trip, I plan to spend the night. Whether or not I intend to spend the night, I plan on spending the night just in case something happens. It's happened to me before where I had to spend the night in 12 degrees. Thankfully, I was prepared for it. Sleeping bag. This is a 30 degree sleeping bag. I'm going to be changing it to a zero degree sleeping bag soon. Get a good one. Get something with down or insulation, something with a hood to come over as well so you can wrap yourself up and stay warm, retain your body heat because that's how you stay warm without a heater. You retain your own body heat. Lantern, I'll bring a lantern with me. Excellent source of light. You don't have to really hold it. You can hang it. It's got a hook, different settings. Too many times. It works well. Water, when I'm doing just a day-to-day -day stuff, I usually have a bottle of water with me. But when I go on a trip, just in case, I got a gallon of water, sometimes two gallons. If I'm going, Planning on spending the night, I bring a minimum of five gallons. But just as an emergency stash, one gallon is just fine. Now these tools, sometimes I have them with me all the time, sometimes I don't. But I got a lot of stuff. I got several of these bad boys, different sizes, different shapes, pliers, fancy bits, Nipex. I love Nipex, they're really awesome. Check them out. More, more, Torx bits, picks, more pliers, lots of different sizes, ratchets and wrenches. I'm not going to pull all those out. Blue Point and Snap-on make some good stuff. I've ran these Blue Point uh, small profile, I don't even know what it's called, some sort of screwdriver for a long time. The bits, they're Phillips head, flat head, they go into here and it gets into the small to reach spots, ratchets. I love that thing. You can never have too many flashlights. My own homemade Phillips head screwdriver that I made with a chisel handle from Snap-on and a Snap-on bit from some random screwdriver I had. I combined them because this combination, I love it. More pliers, X-Acto knife, and it just goes into all the different sizes of the same tools I already showed you. So I'm not gonna keep boring you with that. So that's what I carry when I go off road. Now, if I'm camping, like intentionally camping, you'll know I'll bring my tent, I'll bring my kitchen supplies, I'll bring real food, not my MREs, and, and a lot more in-depth stuff. I also like to carry, I have it around here somewhere, a blanket. So I have, I'll just go to Harbor Freight and I'll grab some of those moving blankets and I'll put that on the bottom of my tent. Or if I have to sleep in my car, I can lay it out in my car, use it as a pad. It's not the best, but it does help and it's pretty nice to have 
recommend having that. It's only $10. Get yourself, I mean, what I'm basically saying is go to Harbor Freight, just look around at their stuff and get what you need. It's cheap, it works well, and it's not super expensive. So that's what I got. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a quick one. I'm just eager to post it because I keep getting a lot of questions, but I will reiterate. This is not all encompassing, okay? This depends on you, what you do, and what you drive, and where you drive, and your experience level. I know I'm gonna get people that say, oh, you need this, or you need this, or hey, you need top end of this and top end of that. I'm not gonna argue that. Just showing you what I have, okay? Also, before I forget, I have Molly panels, and I got some equipment. In here, I keep my air down equipment. This is where we get into the, I'm not very fancy. This is my air down equipment. Boulder tools, tire deflator. It removes the valve stem. It's $30. I've used it for a long time. I don't have the fancy deflate this and unflate that. I want it. I just don't have it because it's expensive. Also, my, tool, my air, air up hose from ARB for when I'm airing up the tires. I also have the boulder tools inflator kit it's got a gauge on it it's got a little tool for your valve stems it's got some extra stems in it extra caps it works well in the other one the other bag i don't use this stuff as much it has more valve tools it's got like an instruction pack it's got these little bendy things to wrap stuff up and then a friend of mine gave me this it's jt brooks automatic tire deflator very expensive. I looked it up online. It was over $100. But it's got four of these tools. You have to preset it. So before you go on your trip, air down your tires to what PSI you want them deflated to. Like I'll air down a tire to 15, let's say. Plug this sucker on and you adjust it until the air stops escaping and it's set. So when you go on the trail and you want to air down, just plug these in, one on each wheel, and it will air down until it gets to that preset PSI and then it stops. It's automatic. Pretty cool idea. I have not set them up yet. I'm, I should probably set them up because it looks really easy and simple and it was free, but I haven't done it yet. I probably will. These are pretty interesting. I haven't tried them yet. And now I think that's it. That's, that's what I got. That's what I carry, what I have in my car most times. Play around, see what you need. Look on Amazon, look at other reviews online. Kind of explore what you need for your vehicle if you have any questions comment below on instagram popo underscore patty as well thinking about changing the name i'm not sure since the channel kind of took off a little bit on instagram at least i've considered maybe changing the name so if you have name ideas hit me up it's not going to be bronco related because i'm not just bronco i know all the videos i've posted are bronco but i have two jeeps as well and i've driven forerunners i've driven land cruisers i've driven a defender I've done all that stuff. I love it all. I'm not just Bronco only. Everything else sucks. That's not who I am. So if you have a name idea, I'd like to hear it. I'm still trying to figure it out. Just realized I have to put all this stuff back in my car and yeah, I don't like doing that. Oh, I have a table too, a folding table. I keep that in my car usually. Yeah, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. And I got some cool stuff. I'm getting a package delivered today and then a few more packages coming in the next week or so from Metal Cloak, Juggernaut Performance, and I've been talking with AccuTune. So if that doesn't tell you what's going to be going on the Bronco soon, I don't know. It's going to be cool.